Today we're looking at Hiram Rhodes Revels. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Hiram Rhodes Revels was the first African American to serve in the United States Congress. Revels was born in Fayetteville, North Carolina on September 27th of 1827 to free parents who were not enslaved. In fact, despite being born in a slaveholding state, Hiram lived his entire life as a free man. His father was a Baptist minister and his mother had Scottish ancestry. And even though African Americans receiving an education in North Carolina was illegal, Hiram attended a school taught by a free African American woman. By the early 1840s, Hiram was looking to follow in his father's footsteps and become a pastor. In 1844, he moved to Indiana to attend seminary and then Ohio to finish his seminary training, and he completed his education and was ordained as a minister, and by 1849, he was the pastor of a church in Richmond, Indiana. And by the early 1850s, he had begun to travel as a minister, preaching in several different churches throughout the Midwest and helping to establish and run schools for African Americans. He was arrested in jailed several times for his efforts to educate African-American communities. During this time, he married his wife, Phoebe Bass, who was another free African-American from Ohio, and together they would have six daughters. By 1854, he was running a school in Baltimore and then received a scholarship to study religion at Knox College in Galesburg, Illinois. He attended Knox from 1855 to 1857 and was one of very few African-Americans in the country to have a college education. When the Civil War began in April of 1861, Revels was living in Maryland, and he began to help recruit soldiers to fight in the Union Army. Of course, when the war began, African Americans were not allowed to serve in the Army, but after President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation that went into effect in January of 1863, Revels began to recruit African American troops to fight and also join the Union Army as a chaplain to minister to the troops. He was involved in the campaign at, at Vicksburg in mid-1863 as Ulysses S. Grant led Union troops to capture the Confederate stronghold on the Mississippi River. And after the fall of Vicksburg, Hiram moved to St. Louis, Missouri, where he again led the charge for African-American education by establishing a new school there. Soon after, he, he served as a minister at several different churches in Kansas, Kentucky, and Louisiana. As the Civil War came to an end and the nation moved into a period of Reconstruction, Revels had made his way to be the pastor of a church in Natchez, Mississippi. And as you can guess, he also established a school for former enslaved people in Natchez. It was while in Natchez that Hiram began his political career. Due to new laws passed in the wake of the Civil War that extended rights to African Americans, Revels was able to get involved in government. Hiram was first elected to the Natchez City Council in 1868, and then a year later, he was elected to the Mississippi State Senate. Very quickly, other Mississippi State congressmen began to recognize the leadership and determination of Revels. At the time in Mississippi, senators to the U.S. Congress were not voted on by the general population as it is today, but rather they were chosen by the state legislature. By early 1870, Miss Mississippi was allowed to rejoin the Union after the Civil War. Along with rejoining the Union, they were allowed to have two senators in the U.S. Senate, and Revels was elected by his fellow congressman in Mississippi to be one of the two senators for the state of Mississippi. In an ironic twist that, that indicated the change that was occurring, Revels took the exact Senate seat that was vacated by Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, before the Civil War. On February 25, 1870, Revels took his seat in the Senate as the first African American to serve in the U.S. Congress. As no surprise, Revels was placed on the Education Committee and continued his work to help former enslaved people get an education. Revels was a member of the Republican Party, but was not part of the radical Republicans that argued to punish former Confederate states. Revels instead argued for forgiveness and reconciliation between the North and the South. Mississippi had been readmitted late in the congressional term in office for Revels, so Hiram only served in the Senate for about a year before he accepted the, a position as president of Alcorn State University. He remained at Alcorn State until his retirement in 1882. Revels remained an active pastor and advocate for African American rights the rest of his life. Hiram Rhodes Revels died on January 19, 1901 at the age of 73 while at a church conference in Mississippi.
Rebels was a champion of education and equal rights, and although his time in the U.S. Congress was brief, nonetheless, Hiram Rhodes Rebels led the way for other African Americans to be involved in politics and government, a privilege that had been denied African Americans for far too long. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.